Okay. So, we have looked at representing that we can represent functions on uh, the computer. Okay. So, today we will look at uh, specifically uh, some mechanisms by which we do this. What we saw that was that uh, we can represent functions, uh, but we want to be able to organize functions the way we organized uh, vectors which we have seen in the last class. Today I am going to talk about box functions. It is a special class of functions. I am going to define two functions to start with. One is a function f. It is defined on the interval 0, 1. The value of f on the interval 0 0.5 0 to 0 0.5 is 1 and outside that it is 0. I define another function g is also on the interval 0 1 its value on the interval 0 to 0 0.5 is 0 and between 0 0.5 and 1 it is 1. So, this value is 1 function value there is 1. If you consider a linear combination of these functions if you look at a f plus b g <coughs> you will see that just like in the vectors in the case of vectors if I took another linear combination c f plus d g an addition of these two and I can add them up they are defined on the same domain an addition of these two will in fact give me a plus c times f plus b plus d times g is that fine. So, we see that just as we did with the other usual vectors that you are used to that we have something that looks like a summation and we are able to do the vector algebra and set it up in a systematic fashion once we define the dot product. So, what we need to do is for functions we want to be able to define a dot product. I will define the dot product as follows. I will define it on for these two specific functions 0 to 1 as f times g times dx. I will use the notation f comma g right because the dot is already used in the case of functions the dot is already used for composition of functions. So, we do not want any confusion okay. If you say mathematics if you say f g uh, it is possible that you confuse it for f of g of x. So, that we do not confuse it we introduce some new notation for the dot product. So, what is f dot g? f dot g is this integral and as it turns out because these regions are non overlapping this dot product in fact turns out to be 0. You can work out that integral and check that the dot products in fact turn out to be 0. We will come back to this point later. Right now what I am interested is in getting as we did earlier defining a magnitude something like a magnitude in the case of a function it is called a norm we define a norm that comes from this dot product just like we did with vectors. So, I could define the square of the norm as f dot f which turns out to be the integral 0 to 1 f squared dx is that fine. Now, in a similar fashion we can define norm g squared is g dot g integral 0 to 1 g squared dx. It is the area under the curve it is clear that they should both be the same. 
what does this work out to? So what is norm of f? So it is integral 0 to 1 f square dx which is actually the integral 0 to 0 0.5 1 times dx which is 1 half is that fine. So norm of f in fact 1 over square root 2 and again I am just duplicating whatever work we did with the usual vectors that you have seen. I can define a, a unit vector as f divided by norm of f okay and as you would expect it is magnitude so to speak would be 1 is that fine any questions fine okay what do we have we have now managed to actually repeat the process that we did for vectors we can actually get uh, we can actually define a general dot product of two functions f and g we repeat the process but in this case they could be the functions could be defined between any two intervals a and b and you could actually define it as f g dx okay f and g are functions that go from take some real number and return a real number is that fine. So in general it need not be 0 to 1 right I will, I will do everything here as from 0 to 1 but in general the definition is not restricted to 0 to 1 is that fine okay. So uh, if, if what if why, why do not we try why do not we try something with uh, 3 coordinates. So what if I define 3 functions f g and h I try something f g and h f is defined in a similar fashion now the only difference is because I have got 3 functions I am going to break up the interval 0 to 1, 1 third, 2 third and that is my function f and I define my function uh, g between 1 third, 2 third that is 1, 0 that is my function g and in a similar fashion I will define my function h I mean I will define my function h and that is my function h the value of h is 0 on the interval 0 to 2 thirds is 1 on the interval 2 thirds to 1 in a similar fashion g is 0 on the 2 intervals 0 1 third 2 thirds 1 third and it is 1 on the interval 1 third to 2 third here it is 1 on the interval 0 to 1 third and it is 0 on the rest of it okay. Now we go back to the example that I used in the earlier class so I asked the question what is 3f plus 2g plus h okay it looks very similar to 3i plus plus 2j plus k where i j k are our standard unit vectors so it is almost as though I have defined these right I previously when you first learnt it you want you may wonder what the heck are i j and k it is almost as though I have actually told you what are i j and k define them in terms of functions right so and you can if you have 5f plus uh, g plus 2k uh, 2 I am sorry h you can actually add up these two quantities you can perform the arithmetic just like you would do normally and get 8f plus 3g plus 3h fair enough is that fine all very nice so it looks like we can use combinations of these coefficients and represent functions how well does this work okay that is the question that we have how well does this work. So what do we have so far we have defined we have defined uh, functions in this form because it looks like somewhat like a box it is called a box function okay we have defined box functions 
and it is clear that on any interval I can define any number of box functions that I want we will get to that in a little while and uh, it looks like I can represent functions on the interval 0 1 using these box functions okay. So we will try to use it and see what happens we will pick a simple function consider the function we will pick a very simple function p of x equals x okay consider the function p of x equals x. So I would like to represent this function I would like to represent this function as p of f the f component p f times f plus p g times g plus p h times h you understand this is the f component the g component the h component of p and all I have to do now is take the dot product so I ask the question what is p of x comma f what is it what is this dot product. this is the integral p of x f dx integral 0 to 1 and we will just evaluate that we will just evaluate that so you get x times f the integral 0 to 1 dx which is well we know f is non zero only between 0 and 1 third so it is 0 to 1 third x times 1 in that re in that domain dx which is x squared by 2 which gives me one by 18 gives me one by 18 is that fine that is actually performing the integration what is the dot product p of x f without performing the integration from here. So what would we like it to be let me not say what is it what would we like it to be what is what is this quantity dotted with what is this quantity dotted with f p f f plus p g g plus p h sorry h dotted with f what is this quantity so it is just p f f dot f is that fine because f dot g is 0 f dot h is 0 and what is f dot f you have to be careful now I change the definition of my f what is f dot f well we have to calculate f dot f for this case f dot f is the integral 0 to and I will write it only till one third right 0 to one third dx which gives me 1 by 3. So presumably if I have n of them it will give me 1 over n. So pf, pf, in fact, is I am going to get it from here. P of x dotted with f divided by f dot f, which gives me one by six. Are there any questions? Okay, so what we are doing now in a similar fashion P G will be P F F plus P G G plus P H H dotted with G which will give me p g times g dot g okay and you can check that g dot g is going to be one third g dot g is going to be one third and therefore what is p g so 
So if you take P of x multiplied by g integrate from one third to two thirds because that is where g is non zero. Of course, do not forget that you have to divide by g dot g. What does this give me? One half. This should give me one half. Okay, this will give me one half, and pH in a similar fashion, pH you will have to integrate it between two thirds and one, two thirds and one P of x, H of x, dx divided by H, H. Which will be, you can verify that it is five six. If you're wondering how to how I know the answer, it just basically comes from a symmetry. So this is about a sixth away from one. Okay, that's basically how that comes. So what is the function? What's the function that we want to plot? Let us plot this function. So this is x, this is p of x and the function itself is a 45 degree line. Is that fine? Function itself is a 45 degree line. We have a representation of the function on those 3 intervals represented by, I uh, will use 3 different colors here, represented by values which are, so this is uh, one third, two third, one, it is a 45 degree line, one third, two third, one, okay. So where is one sixth? One sixth is somewhere in between. What is that? That is PF times F to which I want to add that is plus PG times G and the last one, oops not that different in colour but it does not matter. The last one is pH times H, is that fine? So look at the two functions, I have, I have the 45 degree line that I am trying to approximate and I have this other thing made up of blue and red lines which are nothing but our representation on the computer. If you were to use box functions to represent the functions on the computer, this is what we would get. So clearly just like we have uh, errors in representing numbers, we had round off error, we have a similar error here. If you try to represent the function, right, if you try to represent the function using box functions, you do not get the original function. Actually that should be obvious, we are using constant functions to represent something that is linear, right. But the fact of the matter is that though this I, I projected it, I went through the formal process. I projected the functions onto the box functions. I went through the formal process and what do I have? I basically have a function here. I have a function here which uh, supposedly represents, right, supposedly represents this properly. Take a closer look. In some integral sense, if you look at this, you will notice the area under this curve, the area under this curve is indeed the area under that little triangle there, right. We have managed somehow we have captured that integral being defined as the dot product has come through, right and it is the same thing here. So we are, we are, we are somehow capturing that area properly but the function value itself is not right, right. So I no longer want to call this, I do not want to call this P of x, I want to call our representation, give, give our representation a name, 
right now I will call it p tilde okay right now I will call it p tilde we will introduce more formal notation later right now I call it p tilde. So p tilde of x equals uh, p f f plus p g p g g plus p h h okay. So what do we got so far if you give me a function it is possible for me to define box functions right it is possible for me to use box functions on the same interval and represent get components right project that bo those box project the function onto the box functions right and get components I am aware that the resulting function that I have will not be identical it is unlikely to be identical to the original function there is a an error in the case of numbers we called it round off error in this case I will just call it representation error for now. So this is a representation error and the representation error we have to now figure out how to how to quantify the representation error right okay. So having found a way by which we can find a representation and having discovered that there is an error in the representation we want to now quantify how we get that representation error okay. So how can we do this suggestions so we have the dot product we will use the dot product to do it so normally what we do is so we will we will reuse so that is the reason why this dot product is extremely powerful right that is the reason why we have used the dot product we will use the dot product here to define something called a metric so from the dot product from the norm we will get a metric metric is basically distance we will get a distance now right right now we only have magnitude so think about it normally you can have magnitudes of vectors which is what we normally we have defined so far but you can also def get the distance between two position vectors the points the end points of two position vectors. So we will do the same thing so we can use the dot product so if I have if I have two functions capital F and capital G and I want to know what is the distance between those two functions right then I can ask the I can look at F minus G and take the dot product with itself and that should give me a measure of the distance okay. So this should be some distance between F and G squared right in Cartesian coordinates if your magnitude is if your magnitude of a vector is x squared plus y squared plus z squared right and then the distance function between right so the magnitude squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared then you would say x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared and so on so I am just basically mimicking that plus z1 minus z2 squared right and the distance itself would be the square root of that I am just basically mimicking this okay I am just repeating whatever we have done in the standard vectors I am just repeating that it worked there it should work here. So what is the difference so now I can ask the question representation error I can define it as the square root of the dot product of p of x minus p tilde right p minus p tilde is that fine p minus p tilde let us get back to this p minus p tilde so p minus p tilde is here this is p minus p tilde that distance is p minus p tilde in fact if you look at it these three intervals p minus p tilde is actually the same for this in this particular case p minus p tilde happens to be the same p minus p tilde happens to be the same so if I find p minus p tilde for the first one then I do not have to really repeat it for all three of them I will just I will just do it for the first one okay find out what is the representation error representation error is p minus p tilde the dot product 
h equals dx in 0 to 1 fine and I will find only the first component. So I am going to find p minus pf f squared dx integral 0 to 1 third is that fine everyone. These three the differences between the representation and the function in, in this particular problem they happen to be the same I am just making use of that fact that is all. So what is this x minus 1 by 6 squared integral 0 to 1 third dx there are so many ways by which we could do this okay. So this is x minus 1 by 6 cube 1 third between the limits 0 and 1 third what does this give me so 1 is going to be 1 third minus 1 sixth which is 1 sixth cube and the other is going to be plus 1 sixth cube is that fine okay and there are three of them. So to get this to get p minus to get the representation error I have three of these so in fact it turns out to be 2 times 1 sixth cubed is that okay everyone so this would be the representation error so as I said please remember this is the equivalent for our functions like uh, similar to round off error are there any questions now now we are going to do can we do better this function right on the interval 0 1 on the interval 0 1 we have we define two functions f and g then we define three different functions f g and h why not see if we can define n functions right. So we will define a whole host of functions so uh, we will hold define a whole host of functions and I will use the subscript f i to indicate the ith function right and what is the ith function going to look like the ith function so if I have uh, i a, n intervals if I have n intervals I number these x0 x1 x2 x3 and so on all the x's are equally spaced right and this goes till 1 my ith function so the second function for instance will go from will be non zero from x1 to x2 the ith function that would be f2 the ith function will be non zero will be 1 for x belonging to xi minus 1 xi okay is that fine. So I have to maybe be a little more precise about the way I do it. So what I will do is I will say f0 equals 1 in the closed interval x0 x1 f1 and it is 0 otherwise 0 otherwise f1 equals 1 on the open interval it is open on one side x2 closed on the right side so we will keep everything open from there there on open on the left closed on the right okay dot 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 fi equals 1 on 
x i minus 1 x i fine so that we can did I make a mistake so x f2 would go from 1 to 2 and f3 would go from 2 to 3 would be defined f1 will be go will go from 0 to 1 Oh, I started at F naught. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Yeah, F i. F i. Yeah, that's the programming. <laughs> then we program. Then if we program, we start the count at zero. Actually, you can see I have started the count there at zero. You have to keep your eyes open for that. Are there any questions? The intervals are equally spaced. Okay, the intervals are equally spaced in all these discussions, right? But you have to now see why why these functions are orthogonal. Why does this work? Why are we able to do this? Right? That's where we are going to end this class. But right now, let me see if I can use this fi, and then we will summarize what we've got. So, what do I have? If I have fi, if I take fi dot fi. The length of any interval is 1 over n, fi dot fi is 1 over n, right. You please check to make sure that that works. fi dot fi is in fact 1 over n, fi dot fj, if i is not equal to j, is 0, fine. So, any function. In our case, right now the function that we are using can be represented as is approximately some p tilde can be represented as summation over i going from 1 through n some a i f i, okay everyone. Right, let us get back, we will, we will, we will try to draw a figure for this and see what happens and again we will try to find a representation error. Draw a figure for it. I am not going to draw an exact figure now this is a little more difficult right because there are n of them so it is a little more difficult that is the 45 degree line. So what you would expect and as I said you can you can check this out what you will get is a bunch of steps in this fashion over each interval over each interval it is going to be a constant you cannot represent the linear right it is going to be a constant. However looking at this I would guess that the representation error is quite small okay looking at this I would guess that the representation error is quite small and just as I did earlier. I am going to find the representation error only in the first interval and just multiply it by n okay. So what is what is the what is the representation error in the first first, first uh, interval so for p of x minus p uh, I am sorry a1 f1 is what we want. what is this representation error so in order to do this we need to find we need to find a1 what is a1 a1 equals the dot product of p of x dotted with f1 divided by f1 dot f1 this equals x dx integral 0 to 1 over n divided by 1 over n
x squared by 2 0 to 1 by n times n. Gives me 1 by 2 n. Okay, so we have a general expression. And 1 by 6, everything works out. We have a general expression. 1 by 2 n. So my a1 therefore is p of x. Oh, I'm sorry. My error therefore, representation error, is p of x minus a1 f1. And you guys are letting me get away with a mistake here. Okay, that's better. P of x minus a one f one gives me x minus one by two n squared the integral between zero through one over n. Is that fine? Okay. Earlier we had zero to one third x minus one sixth. You can just verify that it is okay. And this in fact will be x minus 1 by 2 n cubed one third between the limits 0 and 1 by n and that should turn out to be Fine. So over the whole interval, I'll have n of these. The total representation error. I'll just say representation error is do I take the square root first, or do I? So there are n of these, what do I get? n of these, n by 3 into 1 by 2, 1 by 8 n cubed plus 1 by 8 n cubed that gives me 1 by 4 m deliberately leaving the 4 out because I plan to take a square root 3 n squared. This is the representation error squared and therefore the square of the representation error is that our representation error is one by two cube root three times n. Is that fine? Okay. Right. Now what we are going to do is we are going to look at what we have what we have what we have managed to do so far and uh, define a few terms right I have just gone through and done all the all the relevant derivation just a repetition of what we did earlier. Uh, of course in the case of vectors we did not really have a representation error we had representation error in the form of round off error only at numbers okay. Now uh, the first thing to note is it gets better as n gets larger. Right. That is what our instinct tells us that we get closer and closer to the straight line as n gets larger. Okay. So that, that part is good as n gets larger it gets better but there is a bad part to it. What is the bad part? Number of the number, number of jumps that you have in your representation is also increasing right, which I am not comfortable with. Right. So we may be able to live with it there are by the way ways by which you can live with it there are things that you can do to get around it but it is not we ask the question can we do better. Right. So now what have we what have we managed with box functions what have we managed we have managed to get some way by which we can represent functions okay. We have managed to figure out some way by which 
we can estimate the error in that function okay. So the error in the function is of the order of 1 over n which basically means that if, if I am dividing the interval 0 1 into n parts then I have a delta x which is of the order of 1 over n. So the representation error is of the order of delta x and if I make my delta x smaller and smaller the representation error also gets smaller and smaller in a linear fashion okay. So the error is of first order the exponent is 1 the error is of first order I am rather casually introducing language here the error is of first order the error is of first order the convergence convergence meaning as I increase n how close do I get to the solution or to the function that I want how close does the representation get to the original function so it converges to the rep, uh, original function because the error goes to 0 and the rate at which it does it is linear so the convergence is linear okay the error is of order 1 the convergence is linear the representation how well what is the what is the polynomial that you are able to represent exactly what polynomial can you represent exactly constant so the representation itself is 0th order okay the error is first order the representation itself so we represent with box functions we can get a 0 0th order 0th order representation a 0th order representation first order error linear convergence three different things fine okay let's look at this orthogonality business we need to we need to from this in order to talk to converse about these functions we also need to define some terms it is where did this orthogonality come from why why where did we get this f i f j equals 0 f i not equal to j why did that work how did that happen why does that work right so that works simply because if you have one function which is non zero on the ith interval and you have another function which is non zero on the jth interval then uh, if you were to multiply the two right this is non zero where this is zero this is non zero where that is zero so this business of where is it zero where is it not zero we need we need some language for this okay so the interval or the region where the function is non zero is called the support of the function so the support of the function is that part of the domain where the, that part of the domain of definition where the function is non zero it's called the support of the function of fj right is the support of the function so what we have done is we've got orthogonality fi dot fj as being zero when i not equal to j from the fact that the supports of the two functions are non overlapping in a sense the supports are sort of orthogonal the supports are non over non overlapping you understand this contrasts with if you have seen Fourier series before right sin x and cosine x on the interval 0 to 2 pi are orthogonal to each other but they are defined they are both non zero right almost everywhere they are both non zero almost everywhere on the interval 0 to 2 pi is that clear right whereas here we have achieved orthogonality we have achieved orthogonality by basically saying that the support of this function is different from the support of that function they are non overlapping that is important they are non overlapping and therefore we have orthogonality that is one thing that we have that we have that that is one critical thing that we have to notice from here okay. The second thing is though the function gets closer it gets jumpier so we have to ask ourselves the question is there a way by which can we come up with something that will give us smoother functions 
we have constructed these functions box functions now but is there a mechanism by which we can get smoother functions okay. So non overlapping, non overlapping will give us orthogonality in some sense and if we go for smoother functions how do I get smoother the representation here is 0th order I would like to represent at least a first order which means that I should use some kind of linear interpolant that is a possibility some kind of linear interpolant. The other question that you could ask is why not why bother with all these little bits and pieces f1, f2, f3, f4 and so on why not just use polynomials directly would not it be just smoother to use just polynomials directly. So there are two possible things that we can two possible paths that we can take right having mentioned Fourier series why get the orthogonality why get the orthogonality from non overlapping domains right non, non overlapping supports right the domains overlap but non overlapping supports right why get orthogonality from that why not just get orthogonality uh, from uh, somehow to construct it right using the Gram Schmidt process or something of that sort why not just get orthogonality directly from the function right. So there are two possible ways by which we can go what we will do is we will try to follow this linear process right now right we have the box function we will now try to get go to a linear mechanism we will try to use this non overlapping we will try to use these non overlapping functions uh, supports for the functions and see if it is possible for us to generate linear interpolants is that fine are there any questions okay. So in tomorrow's class we are basically going to look at uh, we are basically going to look at we will start with hat functions what are called hat functions. where we will use linear interpolants as the uh, basic mechanism okay.